yes, my Sephora videos are back to haunt you, but today I'm doing a haul update. So this is everything that I purchased from the Sephora sale that happened a couple of weeks ago, and I've had time to test and wear these products. So this is my Sephora haul speed reviews. So these I have my final thoughts in, and I've been testing these with multiple products in multiple ways. So I'm excited to give you my final thoughts on these today. I'll have everything linked down below that I'm talking about to help you follow along. Let's go ahead and get into it. So um, this one was just a pickup, so I'm not going to talk about it. It was a repurchase, excuse me. This is the Inky List Caffeine Eye Cream. It's just a really nice, lightweight eye cream. It has a little bit of a cooling sensation around the eyes as well, so I feel like it does kind of wake up the eye area. So I just, I repurchased this, so that should tell you that. Love this. I also tried my first Fleur fragrance, the Mango Mood, and this is a hair and body fragrance mist, and it's very affordable. It's only $20. This affordable for Sephora, if you know what I mean. They have two other scents. They had like a vanilla one and then a different one that I can't remember. I like this. I think it's really nice. It doesn't have the best longevity, though at this price point, I didn't think it would as well with it just being a fragrance mist as opposed to like an actual perfume. But no, I really like the way this smells. This is a great summer scent, but it definitely needs some reapplication throughout the day. I don't smell Mango Moody. Wait, I don't smell Mango Moody all day with that, but just for a light, nice fruity scent before a workout, things like that, I love that. And then for hair, I picked up the Olaplex Number no. 7 Bonding Oil, which I've used before, but I'm a big hair oil fan because I do have very frizzy hair, so the extra weight that the oil gives is really nice to kind of help reduce the frizz there. I also used it today because the curling cream creates a cast that I use right now, so I use the oil to break that cast so my hair looks soft again. So it's just a really nice oil. It's not too heavy. It doesn't weigh down the hair in a bad way because sometimes with some oils, they almost get kind of clumpy and then your hair looks wet and then it like kind of pulls the hair down. This one is nice and lightweight. Getting into the makeup, Refi. So I purchased this face primer, Glow and Sculpt. I'd seen the girlies using this all over TikTok. And I actually really like this primer. It is very long wearing. I actually think a great way to test a face primer for me to see if it wears a long time is I will put it all over my face and then nothing over top. My face felt tacky and looked glowy all day with this. So I just know product over top, it's gonna stick well. I've heard of those of you with oily skin really love this. I see why it holds that grip. It's very long wearing. Now my biggest thing is with the packaging and it's not for what most people would think. It's this roller thing, which is definitely for the impact of the internet. I just want a pump on this. And I know the big thing about sanitation is you're rolling it all over the face. I'm not as bothered by that as I am. It's just the wheel, like the product gets stuck under here and it stays there until the next time you use it. That to me is more unsanitary. It gets all over this and just having the product sit there, I don't like that though. There is that concern with it touching the face, but I think if you use it on your face, it should be okay. Sometimes with acne, not that great. Anyways, as somebody who went to makeup artistry school, I know a lot about sanitation for clients never ever roll this on a client's face. That's disgusting. It's not the most sanitary kind of thing. I would have liked a pump, but love the formula inside. This is a gem. I hadn't heard anybody talking about this. I picked it up because it looked kind of cool. I wanted to get to know this brand. It was new to me. Obsessed. So this is the Kofi Concealer. I don't know what the name of it actually is, but I have mine in the shade Cocoa Crush. This is a full coverage hydrating concealer. I love it, it wears really well also, it's not too heavy, and it does give a glow to the skin, but of course when you set with powder, that glow does go away. It doesn't look heavy, it doesn't look crepey, but it gives that full coverage, and it's thicker, which normally I wouldn't like, but I like it in this scenario. One of the best full coverage, but still glowy concealers that I've ever used. You know, there's a lot of concealers that I like that have more of a flat finish. This one is truly glowy, but in a way that I enjoy. So I highly, highly recommend this. I've been loving this. I did purchase 
the super popular Givenchy Prisme loose setting powder that a lot of people love. Also heard of this on TikTok. Loving this. I did a TikTok because the biggest debate is Huda Beauty, which is my all-time favorite powder, versus this. I like my Huda Beauty, I think, for more long wear situations, long like event situations, but more for every day. This has like a very subtle super duper subtle glow to it which i feel like makes the skin look less dry so i recommend this more for dry skin and then if you have oily skin the huda beauty is gonna get you nice tight packed matte all of that good stuff they have a very similar blur i just noticed this looks a little less drying they both are like I love them both. A new favorite powder, this is up there now with my Huda Beauty, my Maybelline, and this one. Nothing like a loose setting powder to really make the pores disappear. Okay, and then I also got this set, not necessarily because I was excited about the formula. I like this formula. I have a few shades in this. I just thought it was a cute set from Glossier. It's the Box of Fun Mini Cloud Paint Duo. There's Rise and Puff as the shades. I've tried this uh, rise shade. It is quite pigmented. It's going to be good for deeper complexions, but I just love this formula. It's really lightweight. I will say when you squeeze these, it does feel like there's little to no product, and it's very easy to squeeze too much, and I worry that even with the swatch today, I wasted half of it. I feel like just with the swatch, I, it's just hard to control how much product comes out, so I don't like that packaging aspect, but these are just nice colors to have, and it was a good deal. I like this formula. That one I picked up just because, really. Okay, and then I picked up a uh, Nude Sticks Nudies Matte and Glow Core All Over Face Blush Color in the shade Sunset Gold. Now this I repurchased in a different color, so that should tell you I love this formula. So this one is a little bit more warm. I feel like it's really good for fall. It has like this, it's hard to see from me using it, but there's like a clear circle in the center that is skincare kind of infused. Comparing this to the original Nude Sticks blush, these give more of a glow to the cheek. It really does add a youthful hydration to the cheek that I really enjoy. It's a little stickier, I feel like, than their normal formula, but not in a bad way. I'm not offended by it. My hair doesn't stick to it. I just love the glow that this gives my cheeks. And then I also picked up that really good deal from LYS. It's $20 for three mini blushes. I will update you. I've been telling you the packaging though, very low quality. I do like it that it's clear, but I've already had one of the lids break off and I haven't used these that much. I'm very familiar with this formula. It's really nice. It's a great solid cream blush formulation. The colors are really pretty. The range is very nice. You have like a more Barbie pink, a more muted kind of mauve pink, and then just a really deep, pretty berry shade. So it's a great variety as well and a fabulous price point. I mean, this is one of the most recommended holiday sets that I can offer to you for being the best value. Three colors and an amazing formula at just $20. Highly recommend it. I picked up a couple of powder blushes and I couldn't help it. I wanted to pick up this really fun color of the Give Feeling Cheeky Amplifying Blush Duo in the shade Honeymoon Phase. Somebody please tell me to stop buying purple blushes because they are not flattering on me. So this is not a jab at... <laughs> This product here, it's me, I knew better, but I just want to convince myself that purple blush looks good on me. The top shade here is a, like a lavender shade that's pretty shimmery and very unflattering on my cheek. And then we have this deeper shade, which I think is a little bit better. This can work with the right look. It's not working with this current look, so it looks a little off on my face. What I will say that is amazing about this formula is what you see in the pan is exactly how they translate on the face. Sometimes with these purple blushes, you put them on and they translate more pink on the face. This one, it truly, it's quite purple. It's as purple as it looks in here, and I do like the different formula. So this is a nice formula, and purchasing this color made me appreciate this formula even more because I did realize how true to color these blushes actually apply, which isn't as common as you would think. So I'm very, very happy about this. Not the color that I chose, but that's on me. And then I also picked up a, uh, this is probably like my fifth Laura Mercier blush. I wanted a new color, the shade Chai. Now when I hear the shade Chai, I think a little bit more brown. I need more brown blushes. This one is very, very peach. It's really gorgeous. It goes with a lot of different looks. This is a great everyday blush. If you are not a color person, you just want a good everyday blush that's going to look 
good with every eye look that you do. I do recommend this shade Chai. I love this formula from Laura Mercier. It's just solid. It blends easily. It doesn't over apply. It never looks splotchy. Just a good quality blush and I enjoy this versatile color though I do wish it was a little bit more brown. That's just personal preference. Okay, and then I have this. This was an expensive purchase, but I was like treating myself, you know? So this is the Tom Ford Soleil Neige Glow Highlighter. There were two shades. One is gold and one is like a rose color. I picked up 01 Rose Iris, and I love this highlighter. Now, the debate will be up if this is actually worth the price point, right? But it is a beautiful highlighter. I have it on this side of my cheek. It definitely looks rosy and it has a nice gleam but it does give a more subtle look it looks very lightweight on the skin it doesn't really emphasize texture but it still has it still has a good glow to it i think it definitely is a great representation of a luxury highlight in that it looks so smooth on the skin you can't tell where it starts and end where you applied it it gives a buildable glow so you can get more or you can get less and it just it doesn't look chunky i don't know how else to describe it it's a beautiful highlight. And then I also picked up the ABH one that I heard a lot about. This is the Glow Seeker Highlighter in the shade Sun Idol. Now this one, it's giving 2018, but in a good way. I mean, who doesn't like a nice glow? Comparing it to the Tom Ford, you can truly see the difference in glow. This one is that 2018 phrase of glowing to the gods. This gives it to you, but I just, I think it's really nice and I never got over highlighter. I've appreciated a more subtle highlighter, but a glow like this never looks bad, okay? So this one is also very, very nice. I think the packaging's a bit chunky and a bit heavy, so it's not great for travel, but she gives you glow. Moving on to eye products, I picked up one of these Merit Solo Shadows in the shade Mid-Century, which is just a great one and done everyday brown honestly i love this shade just to throw on and it has pretty good wear time it creased like a tiny bit but nothing that concerned me because my eye it does have a crease so sometimes that's going to happen so it, it wears really good it does sit down my concern and i cannot speak on this yet but the display that they had in Sephora was completely dried out. At this point, they've gotten rid of it, and I wonder if that's why. So definitely make sure you keep these airtight. I hope these don't dry out in the pot because it's a nice product. I do like it. And then this one, though, winner, winner, chicken dinner. This is the Kofi Zari Eyes Eyeshadow in Bronze Brocade, and it's like a gel kind of formula, a bouncy gel. If you're familiar, Butter London used to have these jelly eyeshadows that I was obsessed with. This reminds me of those Butter London jelly eyeshadows. Again, it does set down and it's really lightweight on the eyes so it doesn't crease. This is a product that I would like to get more colors of. It's a gorgeous bronze shade. Now I will say I didn't really like the other colors that they had so I would like for them to expand this range. I'd love to see that. Uh, just like champagne and golds I think would be really nice. Really glitter packed would be even more awesome but I love how thin this is on the lid where it dries down and it doesn't crease but it still gives you that dimension that you see and the reflex in here when you swatch it. Gorgeous product. I love this. I did pick up one eyeshadow palette during the sale which is a major low for me. I used to go eyeshadow palette crazy during the sale but I picked up the ABH Mini Sultry eyeshadow palette. Now I have the full size Sultry. I wish that they did like a good play on the glittery packaging that they had for the full size Sultry but I do think they did a good job narrowing down the colors in here. You do get that Sultry vibe. The shades are very reflective the mattes are easy to blend it's just I loved the packaging of the complete glitter outside of the full size that I wish that would have carried through to this one but the quality is really nice and I do love this color story there's a lot of looks that you can get with this I love that they put the black in here but you also have this lighter shade you can get gray looks for a nine pan eyeshadow palette Quite versatile. I picked up this liner from Give. This is a second color because I really enjoyed the formula of the first one that I got. Now I wish I had gotten a darker brown. This shade Hopscotch that I purchased, it's a little bit light. It looks pretty on its own but if I have any sort of depth on my eyelid for my eyeshadow, this doesn't give the impact that I want. 
but overall this has a very creamy application and it sets down and doesn't budge. I think it's really great if you have hooded eyelids, this one sets down so I think you will like it. So it's a phenomenal formulation and I'm still going to look towards building more colors in my collection of this. This one was just a start. It's a light shimmery brown. I do wish I was a bit deeper. Okay, I'm bragging here because this sold out within hours. Uh, the Makeup Forever Limitless liner set. Just the cutest pencil liners. Some really nice shades. Super versatile eyeliner. I use it to clean under my brow. Lip liners. Keep an eye out for this. I think this is worth it at full price. It's an iconic product. Humble brag that I did get it because I love it. Okay, and then let's move on to lips. So I did a little bit of research and I forgot the answers. <laughs> I can't give you the details, but the Laneige Midnight Minis 5-piece set was only $20. And there were concerns as to if this was actually a good value. Because, yes, it, the packaging comes like this, but look. Like, there is nothing. This is a tiny amount. I did compare it to a full-size Laneige lip mask. The price per gram was not far off. So even though you have five different containers here, I think the price per gram was just a little bit better in the single one. But you do literally get five different formulas in here which is honestly worth the extra, it was like just a tiny bit. So just to be clear, price per gram here is not bad at all, even though it literally does look like you get nothing. All of these put together is about the same as one full size, but you can throw these in your purse. They're lighter weight, they're smaller, and you can pick what flavor you want for the day. So I'd even recommend getting this set over buying just a full size one. I bought so much lip balm, it was unnecessary. I also got the Laneige Lip Glowy Balm in Gummy Bear. I love the scent of this. It's very hydrating. It adds a nice glow to the lips. Not much I can say other than I like it. Okay, now this one I'm gonna fail you with. <laughs> I cannot be consistent enough. I need to put this in my bathroom. I picked up the Inky List Tripeptide Plumping Lip Balm, which over time is supposed to actually make your lips look more plump. Not that I ever believed it would do that in the first place. What I like about this is it doesn't burn the lips. You know how some lip plumpers hurt the lips? This one doesn't, but I also um I still got the same small lips, so. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. I haven't been using it as consistently as it told me to though, so do keep that in mind. And then I did get a new color of the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm. I wish I had gotten a different color. So this shade, Pink Sugar, it's basically clear. I also have the Vanilla, which is also basically clear, so it was unnecessary to buy two of the clear ones. I wanted to get a tinted one, but I like this one. Comparing it to the Inky List and the Laneige, what this has that those don't is longevity. It's still equally as hydrating, but it just stays on the lips a little bit longer to be a, to act as more of like a gloss, I guess. So that's what's different about this is that it does give hydration to the lips, but it also has longevity and gives a gloss-like glow over top. So it's really nice. It's like, are these a little overhyped? Like probably, but that doesn't mean they're not. A good product because they certainly are. I really really like these and in fact when I first got these I was like these are with the hype but now I'm like okay maybe not but they're still super awesome. Okay and then I got a new lip liner color. I love these lip liners from Sephora collection in the shade Dressed to the 90s. This is the perfect cool toned shadow shade to the lips to just make the lips look a little bit bigger without being too dark at least against my skin tone this is a pretty long wearing lip liner and it's very very comfortable there's a reason why i use this on my brides when i was a bridal makeup artist i'm loving this color and this is a chef's kiss lip combo with the nars afterglow sensual lip shine in the shade orgasm now they do have flat colors but what i like about this shade is it's a metallic shade like a metallic finish and metallic finish lipsticks do not get the attention that they deserve this with dress to the 90s from sephora collection it literally looks like there's a glaze over my lips and that reflection just makes my lips look bigger. This is a lip combo that I have not stopped wearing. It is stunning and I love both of these products. I was going to purchase more of the NARS lip shines. I just didn't need it. 
I, I didn't need any more, right? <laughs> I came to my senses, but I really, really love this lip color. Sometimes the orgasm shade from NARS, when they put them in all of their different products, sometimes it just doesn't fit the product and it doesn't look quite right on the face. I was worried that would be the case with this, but it's stunning. Okay, I'm not gonna put this on because it's quite a bright shade, but I did pick up, this is another color, of the Sephora Cream Lip Stain in the shade number 118. You can see my haul of me wearing it. It's the perfect fall lip shade. I'm going to my parents for Thanksgiving, so I think I will have to bring this. Now this is like a classic liquid lipstick, but it's not crusty. You know how some, they crust over <laughs> if you layer them on too much? It's a liquid lipstick that doesn't get crusty. So it still feels a little bit drying, but in a good way in that you know it's gonna last. And even though I'm over the liquid lipstick phase, I will say when it comes to darker and more vibrant lip colors, just something more dramatic, I do like a liquid lipstick because I know it's not gonna get all over my face, which is why I chose this shade from Sephora Collection. And then the last product that I have to update you on are the Say Glossy Bounce. They're lip gloss oils, so they're a hybrid. And I can see that, you know, it has that really slick feel of a lip oil, but the longevity of a lip gloss. They give like a medium coverage for them being a lip gloss, which I think is perfect. And I purchased two shades that I wouldn't normally purchase for myself, and they both are beautiful. Don't be scared of this dream shade. It's stunning. So I've enjoyed this formula a lot. I'm really happy I decided to bite the bullet and purchase these because I think they are a great, not sticky, but still thick lip product that gives a lot of plump and shine. So we like that. And there we have it. That is my speed reviews slash updates of every single product that I purchased during the Sephora sale. If you purchased any of these, let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I don't know why I'm losing my voice right now. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.